So now let's move on to the muscles of the back. And some of the major muscles here, again, you can see he's divided where the left is uh, the shallow superficial muscles. And then on the deep, those are cut away here on the right. And you can see the muscles that are deeper um, underneath these. Uh, one of the main muscles of the back is the erector spinae muscle. So you can see this has got some portion here and it runs all the way down here. So this actually originates up on the mastoid process of the skull and then runs all the way down the back and inserts on the vertebrae all the way along. The back here on the superficial side, we can also see the deltoid. This is the shoulder. So if you touch your shoulder and then move on to your arm, you can feel your deltoid. So the deltoid is going to abduct the arm. So when you lift the arm away from the body, that's your deltoid. Again, here on the superficial side, we've got the trapezius. So the trapezius is going to originate all the way up here on the cervical vertebrae and then insert here on the scapula because this is what it's going to move. And there's kind of two large regions. So there's a portion of the trapezius up in the neck, and then the trapezius runs all the way down the back uh, to these thoracic vertebrae as well. We have the lats or the latissimus dorsi. So this is this large flat muscle on this side. The latissimus is going to originate again on these vertebrae and then insert all the way up on the humerus in the arm. The lats are going to work to adduct the arm. So this is the opposite motion. These are going to help to pull the arm into the body. Over on the right, we can see some deeper muscles. So underneath the trapezius, we've got the rhomboids. And there are two, rhomboid major and rhomboid minor. Major is larger, minor is smaller. These are going to function to retract the scapula. So they're going to pull the scapula in towards the vertebrae. Uh, where they originate on the vertebrae and then insert here on the scapula. On the scapula, we can see some muscles that are sitting in those fossa that you learned. So inside the supraspinous fossa, we've got the supraspinatus. And in the infraspinous fossa, we've got the infraspinatus, as well as ter teres major and teres minor here coming up underneath the arm. The supraspinatus is going to help to abduct the arm, so that's going to be a similar motion to the deltoid. And then the infraspinatus is lateral rotation of the arm. So this is going to help to turn the arm. Under here, we've got the serratus anterior. So the serratus anterior is going to originate on the ribs and then come all the way around the body and insert on the scapula underneath uh, these muscles right there. And this is going to help to rotate the scapula. So it's going to pull the scapula down and to the side. So on this slide, we're going to go ahead and be able to look at some of the muscles of the arm and shoulder. The, the three images here are showing an anterior view. So this is someone, if you were looking at them, you would be looking at their face and chest. This image up here on the right is making a posterior view. So if you were looking at this person, you would be looking at their back. The top is showing some of the more superficial muscles, where the bottom are showing some of the deeper muscles of the arm. So up here on the anterior shoulder, we can see the deltoid. So we saw this on the posterior view as well. It's going to wrap all the way around the shoulder. Um, we've also got the pectoralis major here, which is going to originate on the sternum and then the clavicle and then insert all the way down onto the humerus. As we move into the arm, we can start to see the biceps and the triceps. So the triceps are smaller in this picture because they're on the back of the arm. So you can see the triceps on this posterior view. The triceps are going to help you extend the forearm and they originate on the humerus and then insert on the ulna. So tri means three, seps means head, and brachii means of the arm. So there are one, two, three portions of this muscle on the arm. And then biceps means two heads of the arm. So the biceps actually has two heads, um, and you can see this well on the anterior view. Uh, the biceps is going to be an antagonist to the triceps, so it's going to flex the forearm. 
it's actually going to originate all the way up on the scapula and then insert on the radius. There are a few more muscles in here, the brachioradialis you can see right here. This is going to support the biceps brachii and flexing the arm, as well as this brachialis here are both going to help in flexing the forearm. This image is deeper, so it's cut away some of the other uh, muscles and you can actually see the two heads of the biceps. This anterior view is also deeper and this is showing you the underside of the scapula. So you can see the subscapularis on here. So the underside of the scapula, this is going to be in contact with the ribs. Um, so you're not seeing the ribs in front of this right here. But there's a subscapular fossa on the underside of the scapula and there's this subscapularis muscle right here which is going to originate on the scapula and then you can see it insert here on the humerus and this is going to medially rotate the arm so it's going to turn the arm in towards the median line of the body. So take a moment, choose five of the muscles in the back or the shoulders, describe their name, action, origins, and insertions.